I started as a writer in school, but then I went to the level of my city, Kirk. But then I raised my level at the level of Iraq. It was in 1975 when I went international. As a member of the Assyrian community, I always thought that I, sh I should excel in whatever I do. In fact, it was not only me. There was a trend in our community. If you play soccer, then you have to be the best player of soccer. If you want to be a mechanic, then you have to be the best mechanic. If you go for academics, then you have to try to be the best. I fell in love with pronunciation and phonetic sciences at a time when nobody really in Iraq knew what phonetic science was. I have always been in opposition to the Ba'ath Party. Um, right when they first came you know, to power in 1963. Um, I have been jailed a couple times uh, because of my opposition. Um, they even um, imposed on me what we call Tabaiya Irania, which, which says that I am of Iranian origin. That was only an excuse or a pretext to even further force me to join the party. When I rejected, then they imposed that Tabaiya on me and they put a ban on my travel uh, outside Iraq. Um, I knew at that time, I told my wife, that I don't think we can stay here any longer. Uh, and in my judgment, my escape uh, from Iraq is the only reason that I'm surviving now. I still, until this very day, half of my heart is in Iraq. But uh, emotions sometimes do not serve you. I specialized in phonetic sciences, and that was only in Britain taught as an independent subject at Leeds University. So when I arrived there, everybody looked at me, who and what is this Middle Easterner doing in phonetic sciences. I finished, in four years, I got three uh, degrees. And I guess I finished my PhD the fastest of all. In maybe in 15 months, I compiled more than 500, 600 pages. The history of the Academic Society goes back to 1984-85 when a group of us started thinking that we need uh, a type of organization that helps promote uh, academic views, academic studies in our community because we were totally lacking in that area. So we um, we got together um, in establishing this organization and the name was carefully selected by me um, to have the, this, this uh, element of academic studies because without academics there is no real progress, there is no real education. We conducted some very successful uh, academic uh, uh, activities. But I remember the first presentation why by the late international scholar Arthur Vubas, who at the time was an authority on the Syriac language throughout the world. And he gratefully attended the event and he gave the first presentation 
on the uh, contribution of the Syriac language in history. Uh, I think uh, he was a very creative writer. That's why he was given priority when we were celebrating our personalities. He was one of the first to be invited and celebrated uh, through the Assyrian community in Chicago. I vividly remember the event, particularly when uh, William Daniel, because of the occasion, he became so sentimental, so he was really almost crying of joy. It's true that William Daniel took Qatine, which is part of our culture, for maybe thousands of years, maybe hundreds of years, maybe thousands of years. But when he took that, he did not replicate it. He did not reproduce it. He did not just um, transcribe it. He took the image of Qatine and put it in a complete attire of modern nationalism and modern concept of Assyrianism. It's a book that you can use um, for training uh, teachers of the language. It's a book that uh, students in universities can use uh, as a textbook for um, preparation for a degree in linguistics. We could devote the money, for instance, to give awards to the first three students who graduate from the Department of Syriac or Assyrian Language at the University of Baghdad. We can do a lot of things just to promote the academic teaching of the language. Not just teach it in a church or teach it at home, but the, the, the teaching of language academically is one way of promoting the survival of a language. If the speakers of any language move from their homeland, and from the core concentration of the population into another language where they are the minority and the other language is the majority, they cannot in any way, shape or form help the survival of their language more than three, four generations. That is a sociolinguistic law of language survival. My linguistic judgment, if you want to really invest in the promotion and maintenance of a language, the best is in the north of Iraq, particularly that we have now over 50 schools which either full-time or part-time are teaching the language. أنا قريت قرين قوم درشة شرويت إنه هدرة ومسعيت النصيوين من صدرة قد ما شرويت شرين أنا قرأ لشان السورية وهرادخ من لشان السورية قرية لشان عربية قردية ولشان إنجليزية. 
كل اي مرحله دراسه تي بثقوا نصيبين يعني اي ورابا خمندي بسيمه سب راب سب كل سوراي اخوا كل رابيان سوراي و قرايه خليشانه اخني فخورين تقراي لي هو خزايا انه انا طلاب قمنا هو اللي مطايا الكليات هو اللي مطايا الكليه الطب وصيدله وهندسه واداره واقتصاد ومعاهد كنت خاخنا دخلت بي After my retirement three years ago, I have published two books. I have published six, seven major papers. And I have one complete manuscript finished for a book. I'm writing my fourth book, which is the 11th book. I want people to know that, you know, that I have contributed to human knowledge in my own way at an international level. Um, I want other people to do what I have done. And I think if I ever have a message for my Assyrian brothers and sisters, please think about the present time and plan for the future and talk about the future more than you talk about the past. And that is a signal of progress. Otherwise, we are just staying where we are without any new production.